G'day guys, welcome back to True Footy. Today, Druzy, we're going to be discussing the fact that the top eight for the 2021 AFL season has just been blown right open. <laughs> Unfortunately, it's kind of come at the cost of uh, certainly my club and a little bit of yours as mm. well. I actually was looking at it, I reckon there's maybe 12 to 13 teams that can mathematically, realistically make it. Yeah. Um, some of those teams I don't rate. Mm-hmm. Uh, but the fact that, you know, these contenders, are, or top eight contenders rather, are dropping points left, right and centre, uh, the, the mathematical range is, mm-hmm. is quite large as well, which is a little bit stinky. Six, seven and eight are up for grabs, depending on uh, the results that happen towards the back end of the season, because mm-hmm. a lot of these sides face off against each other. So obviously we were recording this on the back of round 16, which uh, saw a lot of upsets I guess and maybe not upsets but also just like, we're upset uh, yeah I guess we're upset yeah there's a, there a few upsetting results um, Richmond were 8th and they mm-hmm. got knocked off by Gold Coast in Melbourne now they're ninth. Uh, GWS shocked the Demons the top side of the ladder at the time uh, to crawl into 8th spot with a win at the MCG no one really saw that coming nope. Fremantle blew kind of 8th spot in the loss to Carlton had they won that they'd be sitting in the 8th right now that invites Carlton up to the that top 8 race as it, well it really does and believe it or not St Kilda are not out of range of the top eight, and they've been deplorable. Rose from the ashes. They have, yeah, and uh, they obviously beat the Pies. It wasn't even a good win. No, it um, wasn't. Yeah, but they've leapfrogged Essendon now, who we also kind of consider a contender as well, mm-hmm. but now mathematically all these teams have formed a bit of a glut, mm-hmm. and uh, with seven rounds to go, um, yeah, it's hinging on you know these teams performing pretty well to even make it. Yeah. So, Drew, is it fair to say we've kind of locked in the top five? You have Melbourne, mm-hmm. Bulldogs, uh, Geelong, Brisbane, and Port Adelaide, yeah. I think comfortably going to do it. I think there's a two game uh, gap between fifth and sixth okay. um, and then we've got Sydney who's the first contender we'll talk about mm-hmm. are we close to locking them in yeah yeah well <laughs> they had that really good early season form and they went through a bit of a dip but their last two have been really good who have they got this week well I'll go through what they're um, they're currently on so they're 36 points at 114 percent 114 percent yeah generally you'll make the eight with a percentage like that uh, and they're two wins clear of ninth which yeah. helps um, but so they've got the dogs this week at Marvel, a big test, yes, and then that's right. they've got the Giants as well. I can't remember if that's a home game and away game. I think it might be an away game. It will game. be away. The first one was at the SEG. That's right. Yeah. Um, and then their fixture includes Fremantle, Essendon, two sides, uh, and including St Kilda, that are realistic. Well, not realistic, but like within the uh, the frame of the eight. And the Giants. Their best wins this year for me give me confidence that they'll make it. In addition to being, you know, a game or two games clear at night. Yeah. Um, but their best wins were against Richmond uh, and Brisbane in round one. Mm-hmm. And then you'd have to say their win over West Coast in the, the purely because of how dominant they were against a side yeah. that was I thought was better going into that game. I clearly don't think that now. Um, I'm very confident City are locked up. Even their losses though, like they had a tough loss against uh, Melbourne at the G a couple months back, yep. narrowly losing to Port Adelaide. So they're mm-hmm. competing with all the top sides. I haven't been blown out by any side this season. They beat Geelong. And they beat Geelong. Yeah, that's true. So their performance against the top sides is also really compelling. So we've sort of been talking them up as a team to make up numbers in the eight, but if they're performing well against good sides around their range, maybe mm-hmm. they do pinch a final. They just need to hold that form, which we know they're capable of. They can't afford another dip heading into the, the end of the season. They'll want a home mm-hmm. final. Not that their home ground advantage is much. They seem to, yeah. to choke a bit at home. They need to be playing their best footy at this stage in the season. Come on, the mm-hmm. Swans. But yeah. yeah, I think they'll finish in the eight. Yeah, I am very. I think they'll finish top six. I think they've got their sewn up now. First episode of the Drew Footy Show. I'm just going to be smug as I can be here. I, I chose them as my surprise top eight. You did, actually. Credit to you. That was a good call in hindsight. Yeah. Thank you. Well done. I don't think I've made any good calls this year. (laughs) Uh, We'll talk about the next contender here. Um, And this is where it gets a little bit stinky. The Mm -hmm. West Coast is seventh at the moment. Oh, very stinky. It is stinky. Yeah. I Like, all the sides that we're about to go through now have had stinky periods. (laughs) Gross. (laughs) So it currently sits seventh on 32 points, with the percentage has dropped from 103 to 95, which makes it the worst out of any team in the eight, um, and worse than Richmond's as well. Their one win clear of ninth, which worked in their favour. Um, their run home is North Melbourne this weekend, St Kilda in Perth, uh, the D's and Freo all in Perth as well. Okay. Um, so some of those were considered easy wins, but now in current form, that's looking a bit iffy. In a way, they've got the Crows, Pies and Lions, and none of those are okay. gimmies on the form. In fact, I'd say they'd certainly lose to the Lions and the Crows and Pies, they could drop one or two of those as well. The only um, win you've had away was against Carlton in a pretty bad patch in their, the only in their season. Game I'm pretty sure it is. So, yeah, you're not very good as soon as you get on a plane. Mm-hmm. Your form goes out the window. But I think out of those sides... You'll beat North, you'll beat the Saints, you'll beat Frio, Crows and Pies. If you play your best footy, you'll beat those sides. Mm. But uh, yeah, you're not going to beat the D's or Lions. Oh, D's in Perth, maybe. Lions away, you can yeah, no put a line through that yeah. one. Yeah. 
Uh, we did beat the Hawks in Melbourne as well. Not exactly a big scout. Oh, but that true. Was at least I think that away form is a little bit overstated. I, yeah. think, I think we're definitely better at home, but every club's better at home. And I think when you're interstate as well, it's more on show when you're poor interstate because... Mm. Like Melbourne clubs barely leave the state, so yeah. there's no away form to really assess, and most of them lose like in Perth. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. So I yeah. think that's overstated. But the Eagles obviously have issues, which we've talked about on both our channels in recent times. How confident are you that they'll make the eight? Medium. I think they'll sneak in seventh or eighth. I reckon. Yeah. With those games, you got the Roos, you got Frio, easy wins. The Saints, mm. Crows. That's sixteen points there. You'll uh, you'll be battling until the the last game of the season, but. I think the Eagles lock them in. Yeah, I d- I'm definitely not a lock it in territory for me. And at some of those away games. Oh yeah, maybe not lock them in. Yeah, I know what you're saying though. They're good enough to be there. Yeah, for and, sure. Uh, and that's it's just a bad time for me to predict because this is like the lowest ebb of the last four or five years. Yeah. <laughs> to be completely honest. Um, that being said, we're still seventh which is stupid, Mm -hmm. Um, and we'll get into some of the teams that are miraculously below West Coast. We'll talk about the Giants now, another team that's been up and down. Uh, They're currently in eighth spot with that huge win over the Ds, uh, with 30 points having a draw, so percentage not really relevant, although it's not great at 97%, so if another team has a draw, it becomes relevant again, and they're just two points clear of Richmond in ninth spot. Their run home is the Suns, Swans, Power, and Tigers all at home. And their away fixtures are Essendon, Geelong, and Carlton. So a bit of a mixed bag. Uh, their best wins this season were beating the Swans, who um, yeah. I guess that's a good win. To be yeah. honest. Like, the Swans kind of dipped around that period. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and then they beat the Demons as well. So yeah. they've shown they can match it with the better sides. I guess they beat a fellow finals contender in the West Coast. What do you make of the Giants? GWS is such an up and down side. Like one week you can like say, yeah, pencil them in. They've beaten Melbourne. If they continue that form, they'll be a top eight side. Then they draw to North Melbourne and lose to the Hawks. So they're, they're such a hard uh, side to predict. But if they can if they can continue the form that we know they're, they're capable of, they'll, I think they'll make the eight as well. Um, that midfield's clicking again. Cal Maud, Whitfield, Hopper, uh, Taranto all playing really good footy at the moment. And uh, Toby Green, one of the, the best players in the comp on his day as well. He can just flip a game on its head. So they have all the, 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 per- the personnel. They have all the clientele there uh, required to make the eight. And they should be there considering they were in a grand final two years ago. Mm. Um, they had an off year last year. So our expectations off them have dropped. But realistically, they should be a top eight side. Yeah, I agree. I think the parts are all there. Mm. I don't. I think they're underachieving based on the uh, the sum of their talent, uh, as opposed to some other clubs who are probably overachieving. But yeah. Um, yeah, the Giants at this stage really borderline to make it. And mm-hmm. uh, yeah, we'll talk about some of the other contenders. We'll go to Richmond now, a team we just did a video on mm-hmm. uh, on the True Footy YouTube channel. They currently sit ninth, their natural habitat. They've got 28 <laughs> points, a positive percentage of 100.6, um, which is higher than the two clubs above them. And they're just two points behind the Giants in eighth. I think the yeah. most concerning thing with Richmond is their last two results, similar to West Woeful. Coast. Yeah, a 40-point loss to the Saints, uh, lowest score in 60 years. And then, uh, yeah, getting well beaten in most senses against the Suns. Their next three is Colin. Collingwood, Brisbane, and the Cats, and two of those teams are some of the best in the competition. Yeah, so, so they'll get four points out of those three, probably. Yeah, at best, um, you'd think, and uh, it's real gut check time for them in that sense. Uh, then they've got Fremantle in Perth, the Giants in Sydney, and then North and the Hawks. So again, probably splitting those two and two. Yeah. Um, their best win of the season was against the Dogs in yeah. round seven, I think it was. But mm-hmm. other than that, they haven't really fired a shot against quality teams. Melbourne no. did them easily. Geelong did them easily. What we know about Richmond is that they come hard at the end of the season, gross, um, and they're a quality side when they want to be, yeah. um, but they just haven't seen it that year. So I, we did kind of answer this, but how confident are you that um, Richmond are yeah, going to come back? Cracking at the seams. A little bit, yeah. I think this is the latest they've left a, a big run if, they, if it's going to come. So, yeah, Yeah, sticky. we did a whole video on this, so I'm sort of just recycling the same old thing. That's but right. They, yeah, their midfield isn't really clicking at the moment. I think that's all we need to say. If you want to <laughs> know more in-depth thoughts on Richmond, um, yeah, we've done a whole video on it, but uh, it's looking really dicey for them. Could definitely make the eight still. They're going to beat North. They're going to beat the Hawks. They'll beat the Pies. Frio in Perth, that's a that's a 50-50 with the current form that they're in. But they, they just haven't looked convincing this season. I don't think they'll be, play it a prelim for the first time in four years. Yeah, so. I think they could easily win a final uh, yeah. or two even uh, yeah. if they make the finals. But as I said in the other video, there's a different mental battle motivating yourself to go for eighth when you've been the best team. Like, yeah. how can you bring yourself to care? Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> So exactly. we'll see what happens with Richmond for sure. We'll talk about Fremantle, your yes! boys in 10th spot coming off a uh, disappointing loss uh, in a game that really cost you eighth spot, as we yep. said. 10th <laughs> uh, spot, 
28 points uh, total, 92%, which I thought would be a horrible percentage, but you're actually within touching distance of mm-hmm. the other seventh and eighth spot who have negative percentages uh, and just two points behind eighth as well. What is working for Fremantle in their favour is that they don't have to leave Perth too much for the rest of the season. Because permitting no COVID. Permitting no COVID. So that's the other variable in all this. But they've also got home games against the Cats, Tigers, Lions and Eagles. Mm-hmm. So you've got tough fixtures at home. Yeah which makes this really iffy. And your away fixtures are Sydney and the Saints. Yeah. Mm. The frustrating thing about Freo is I, I would have backed us to beat Carlton and Brisbane at home. Brisbane would have been a much closer game, but we, we match up well against Brisbane. They only beat us by four goals, and that's probably the difference between playing at home and away. So we've we've left points on the table. Disappointing a result against Essendon, another game where we just didn't kick straight and it cost us. On the weekend against Carlton, that was an eight-point game pretty much, and yeah, we were the better side for majority of that game and lost. But we're, we've grown into the season. Like We're, we're playing, uh, we're more competitive each week, which is good. It'd be very good to, to nab a win against a Lions, a Cats, or a, a Tigers, because we're capable of it, I think. For, battle of the felines. Yes, battle of the felines, exactly. Saints away. It's just a fixture that I feel like Freo would lose. Mm. For just, well, yeah. that game could be a dead rubber by the end of the season yeah. if you're not in the finals mix, so exactly. that's true. Freo, we're going to need to continue the uh, competitiveness that we've shown in recent weeks, because... At some points in some seasons, we just fold and our form just goes out the window. So we just got to keep competing and uh, playing four quarter efforts, which we have been in recent weeks, to be fair. Or well, last week, we played three quarters, but just, just be competitive each week and don't fold and uh, play our best footy, which we are definitely capable of. We don't have too many injuries and we've got some players coming back in as well. We could make the eight, but it's going to take a lot of, yeah, a lot of grunt, a lot of integrity and a lot of passion. We know that Fremantle are a decent side at home. Um, they've definitely got a home ground advantage as such, and you're playing most of your games at home. What works against them is that uh, generally don't run out seasons too well. Yeah. Sometimes that's due to injury, and that they may have overcome that. Uh, but even if they do, the record against teams better than them is not great. Yeah. So you, we were saying on the Drew Footy Show, they generally beat generally beat the teams you expect them to beat, um, yeah. but they haven't claimed a big scout as such for a little while. It's, in fact, their best win this year is against Sydney, who was yeah. sixth, um, and then against Collingwood, who were playing good footy at the time. Mm-hmm. And your record in derbies, old lad, uh, is not great. Um, so Get out of it. The, it, it you'd, need, uh, you'd need a seismic shift for Fremantle to play the best football they've played all season to make it. That's yeah. my opinion. So. In 11th spot, I can't believe I'm saying this, but St Kilda are realistically not out of the finals race, which I ruled them out about 10 rounds ago, yeah. <laughs> to be honest. Um, but they've just trickled over the line in yeah. some average fucking games. Very average. Um, but because of all those other teams dropping points, they can still make it. And to be fair to them, two wins on the trot, I think at least two wins. Um, they're playing some improved football, not yeah. that that's hard. They're 11th, 28 points. Um, which puts them the same as Fremantle and Richmond as well. So if we're talking about Fremantle and Richmond as finals chances, you have to include St. Kilda, who are also two points behind eighth. What works against them is the 84% percentage they have (laughs) from copying so many beating Lana Rhodes. (laughs) (laughs) What also works against them is they've got away fixtures against the Lions, Eagles, and Cats. I mean, yeah. I guess the Cats... Oh, that's going to be a GMHBA. So that yeah. is a genuine away game. Um, so they're... They'll lose all three of those. You'd think they'd lose all three of those. Maybe pinch West Coast on current form, but we'll see. Uh, and then at home, they've got Port, Carlton, Sydney, and Fremantle. Again, none of those are easy. Three of those teams will make the finals. And then there's Carlton, who are probably evenly matched with them, to be honest. Mm-hmm. They've had some good wins this year against Richmond, although Richmond was shithouse. Uh, and West Coast kind of shat the bet against them. But <laughs> to be fair, it was a good performance yeah. from St. Kilda. So that being said, they haven't really like played well against contenders this year so um do you think St Kilda had any chance maybe like it's they, stupid, they, they were a top six side last year mm. so if they can rediscover that form definitely they're just grinding out these bang average results like mm. getting the wins but just not looking convincing at all uh Jack Steele is in he's in great form they've just got two of their ruckmen back in in the same side at the same time so mm. Roland Marshall Paddy Ryder sharing the ruck load and it's uh yeah it's doing, doing wonders for them. The, 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 the. Maxi King, if he can kick straight, um, <laughs> that'll give him a chance to climb the ladder as well. And Tim Memory, he's as solid a forward as they come. So lots of tough fixtures there. They'll probably beat Frio. Uh, it's going to be a tough game against Carlton, but the rest of those are tough fixtures. I don't think they'll make the eight. What works for them, like you said, is their ruck duo feeding their quality midfield. Um, that, in theory, makes them you know a decent side. And the fact that they've proven they're at, they should be a decent side <laughs> last year, that being said, like Fremantle, it would take a seismic shift in them playing by far and away their best football. Yeah. Not out of the realms of possibility, but in my opinion, not a super realistic chance. Yeah. yeah. 
In 12th spot, this one surprised me how far Essendon have fallen. They're below St. Kilda on the ladder, but have been talked wow. about as a finals chance, and in my opinion, have been a better side than St. Mm-hmm. Kilda this year, but For the sure. numbers don't reflect that. They're 12th, 24 points, 99%, and 6 points behind 8th, and even though they're 12th, uh, mathematically, still within reaching distance of that 8th spot. The Crows and Giants and Swans all play them in Melbourne. So, again, two of those are finals contenders, but important 8-point games. Yeah. If you think about it, they, they win those games, and that opens it a little bit up for them. Those are all 50-50 games. So. Yeah, yeah, that's true. And they, they generally have a history of making games close with Sydney as well, so yep. that'll be really fascinating. Uh, Collingwood and the Dogs, neutral, probably split those, and then uh, they've only got goal host away, and you'd think they'd win that if they're a realistic finals chance. Their best win was against the Eagles in Perth. That was the one and only time they've really taken a, a big scalp this year. Yeah. They, um, other than that, they haven't really looked too threatening to the really quality sides. They did nearly beat JWS, but more it's been a tale of how their development and uh, of like young guys and, yeah. and there's been a lot of promising form, but obviously it hasn't really translated in wins. So do you think uh, they're just about out of the finals race? They've shown good enough form to be in it, but mm-hmm. yeah, they're, they're a developing side similar to Frio. doesn't really matter if they do make the eight or not because they don't want to make any waves if they get in there. It's just mm-hmm. been yeah, a really good year of development with guys like Darcy Parrish and Merritt really gelling in that midfield and all the young guys that we you know, they have Harrison Jones, Perkins, Cox really developing this year. Uh, I don't think they'll make the eight, no. But th- those are some winnable games. They'll they'll give it a good crack, but yeah, I don't see them finishing in the top eight. Yeah, they'd need to pull at least one upset to even go four from seven to finish the year and six points behind eighth. I think it's unrealistic, yeah. but it's overall a pretty successful season. The final team that we're nominating as a chance to play finals this year, and I cannot believe I'm saying this <laughs> because I do not rate this side at all, and even their fans don't rate it at the moment, but we're talking about Carlton, <laughs> who currently sit in 13th and are still in touching distance of the top eight in the same way that Essendon are. Mm. The only thing that separates Carlton and Essendon is 6%. Uh, the same amount of points, and therefore they're only six points behind eighth spot. So they can still do it. Their run home is Geelong, Collingwood, North, the Saints, the Suns, and the Giants. I know that's a lot to take in. They could win four of those. Yeah, I'd say three. They'd probably start favourite or equal with maybe equal with the Saints, yeah. and then they have to knock off the Giants. But then they've got an away game against the Power. So I think their run home is actually up against them they yeah. again have to play ridiculous football I don't think Carlton have demonstrated an ability to they don't deserve to make the eight. no they don't <laughs> but I have to include him in this video yep. we're going to include Essendon uh, they're only 6% behind they're a massive outside chance but with that win against Fremantle who seemed to be their buddy for whatever reason yeah. uh, they're in with a shot yeah they always just beat Frio and like <laughs> even on the weekend like Frio were the best side for majority of that game every time we play Carlton we just shank and it, we just make Carlton look good mm. I, 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 don't, I haven't seen anything from Carlton which I've gone yeah that, mm. that's real good footy Early in the season, they competed with some of the best sides, but never really got any big scalps. They just, yeah, they're, they're not a great side, Carlton, no. to be honest. Out of all of these teams, I, I'd say they probably have the least potential out of, you know, like, GWS's, Essendon, yep. Frio, on par with St. Kilda for me. They're not going to make the eight, no. No, I agree. And uh, one thing we looked at before making this video is how well do they perform against the good teams. They've beaten Fremantle twice, but if I'm not mistaken, Fremantle's the highest ranked team they've beaten yeah in 10th Essendon's the other team they beat but they're 12th so yeah okay yeah it's uh it's not a great historic record for Carlton no. this year and to be fair I, I maybe just kick him in the balls for no reason I think their fans are not thinking they're going to play finals but, yeah. uh, but still mathematically in with a shot that's how wide open this is all right so now we've talked you through our contenders uh who mm-hmm. are half decent chances to make the eight but we have just put together a little squiggle ladder predictor for you so Druzy, why don't you take us through what your predicted ladder is based on all the predictions for the rest of the season not put my name on this but just going through squiggle clicking the buttons I'll, I'll tell you what i've got so i've got dogs finishing first the position that they're, they're in at the moment brisbane in really good form at the moment i've got them finishing in second geelong i've got in third i've got melbourne slipping to fourth after holding that top spot for so long uh, i've got port slipping out to fifth Sydney, as you said, top six. You'd, yep. you'd like them for six. I've got them in six. So we agree that the top six is pretty much set yeah. somewhat. Yeah. yeah, could swap around in the order, but yeah. maybe. Um, West Coast and GWS, seventh and eighth. Yeah. Uh, nice. So I've got Richmond, Essendon missing. Uh, I've got Carlton finishing 11th above Frio. Wow. And yeah, Frio finishing in 12th. Just wow. because, yeah, Carlton have a somewhat easy run home with mm. the Suns north. Um, yeah, maybe so, not. So. Maybe not. But uh, yeah, hopefully yeah. the Dockers fin- finish above Carlton. That'd yeah. make me happy. Sweet. I'll take you through mine. Uh, similarly, I have the dogs taking out top spot and Brisbane with a strong run We've home. We've literally got the same top eight. Second. <laughs> uh, have we actually? But okay, I guess we'll talk through the reasoning. Geelong, uh, I'm glad to see them third, to be honest. Mm. I think there's a chance that we're going to finish fifth. Uh, and there's a couple of iffy games where GWS play Port at Manuka and 
I think I predicted the Giants to win that because they just knocked off Melbourne. But mm. if that goes the other way, then that changes the look of this top four and surely the Ds don't slip out. But I've still got them going 17-5. and five. Like That's usually a premiership winning yeah. record. So it's a very strong top four. And I don't think it matters that Melbourne finished fourth. I can no. still see them winning week one against the Dogs. So it yeah. um, doesn't really matter too much. Uh, yeah, Sydney, like we said, comfortably. I have backed in the Eagles to turn it around a little bit. Um, out of blind faith. Because I think I think they're better than what they're showing, and yeah. they, they generally respond. 100%. Um, the interesting one is Richmond missing the eight. I think I said in my video, I, I think they'll make the eight, but when you do the ladder predictor, uh, based on their fixtures, even I thought I was being generous to Richmond, mm-hmm. I still have them in the ninth spot. Yeah. So that makes it iffy. And I, uh, unlike you, had Fremantle higher than Carlton. So nice. I think I had uh, Fremantle beating St. Kilda in the final round. Okay. So that's that would be the difference. difference. But yeah. yeah. So there we go. That is what we kind of predict at the moment for the, the final eight. Uh, it is a wide open race. Yeah, um, but sure. yeah, Richmond missing out would be still a bit of a shock, to be honest. Um, and the Giants... We, want... don't, we don't know which way they're going to go, the Giants. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I back them in, though. Yeah. They've been more reliable than Richmond. Yeah. If you just look at this year. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. All right, guys, let us know in the comments what you thought uh, of our analysis, but also like our predictions. Which team that's an outside chance do you think will make the finals? Make some big calls. Mm -hmm. Uh, We'd love to hear from you. Do go check out the Drew Footy Show on Drewsy's channel. And uh, we've also just done a video talking about our Brownlow predictions Mm because it's getting to the pointy end of the season. uh, And there's plenty of fun stuff like that to talk about. Thanks for watching, guys, and we'll see you in the next video. Bye.